Almost exactly 58 years after Operation Road's End, Brett anxiously makes his final dive to the legendary Point Deep Six. This is his last chance to verify the past. All right, I'm going to set down on the bottom, Bob. Okay, you're coming in on the, on the uh, big one, too. OK, how do I look? How do I look? Are you, you're gonna, you're straight on? Straight ahead, you're going to get it. I need somebody to watch the uh, heading and see what our drift is, please, and make sure we don't drift too far. Seven tenths. All right, give me a little reverse. Five meters. There's a target right there. All right, tell them to, tell them to let cable off. Both of them. Both of them. Bing, bing, we got both targets. Bob, give me a 180 degree field of view. There it is. Got him. There it is. All right. Good work, Brett. After 10 days at sea, the crew finally see some wreckage. But they're not sure what they have. Is it a submarine or a shipwreck? I can't tell anything. All the upper works are gone, Ian. Let's go down it and see what we can find in the other direction. I think this is the bow right here. To get their bearings, they travel the length of the massive hull in search of features that will yeah, help them identify what they're diving on. Boy, this is a big thing. That's a great angle. Look at the size of the hole in that. The jagged holes in the hull indicate large explosions ripped it apart. I can't believe what we're seeing. Boy, it's heavily encrusted. They're all this overgrown. We're never going to be able to identify them other than by position. The team is shocked by the extensive damage to the wreck, but they see signs that this is a submarine. All right, wh what are we looking at here? Oh, there's a hole in the hull. Yeah, Ian, there you go. Look, there's a gaping hole. The pressure hull is ripped open. Look, there's the, the deck line right there. See that right there? That's where it meets the pressure hull. That's the old upper deck. See, all the stanchions are there, but the decking's all gone. With just minutes left on the final day of the expedition, Brett has confirmed that this is a Rhodes End relic. Now they anxiously search the mangled wreck for her conning tower, which will positively identify this submarine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit more there it is. Whoa, no, we're on it. There it is. There's the conning tower right there. Okay. Excitement mounts as the team suddenly realize what they're looking at. Well, that could be the 58 because it's the one with windows, right? Uh, I think you have the 58. And we're coming along the upper railing. What is this? Well, that would be the top windows. Of the tower. It's like this one here. Yeah. Ah, it's that. Yeah, no, there's our mast. And then it's got three masts. That's it. Okay, that's the 58. The team believes that this is the wreck of the I-58, the very submarine that scored the largest naval victory for Japan. Here lies a powerful link to the USS Indianapolis, which has never been found. It's a major triumph for the expedition. They have exposed the largest collection of super submarines in the world. The US Navy went about destroying and hiding the submarines. But in a strange twist of fate, they created an underwater museum unmatched anywhere else on the planet. Japan's Graveyard of the Ghost Fleet.